We were pushing through some tight paperwood when this eight pointer took off, then stops long enough for us to get the camera on him. During the rut, if you can find some hinds, then there is a good chance a stag or two won't be far away. That is exactly what happens on this occasion. First it was this seven pointer. Then 10 minutes later, the small six pointer turns up. And 45 minutes before dark, this eight pointer turns up from out of nowhere. He headed down into the creek. Then we pick him up walking towards our direction. This stag could be an easy shot for my open sight 3030. But we decide to leave him and keep looking for something hopefully a little bigger. Trail cameras can be a great tool for monitoring your hunting areas and they give good intel into not only trophy potential but the animal population as well. Most of these devices are used in photo mode because up until recently the video quality on many brands has been well below average. However over the last year or so manufacturers such as Browning released their Spec Ops series that feature a dedicated video processor. These trail cameras can produce stunning full HD video footage at up to 60 frames per second. We prefer to hunt the bush blocks during the rut, but a lot of these locations do not hold many resident stags throughout the rest of the year. Towards the end of March and just prior to the beginning of the roar, is when we begin to see the inflow of stags, like this nice eight pointer. Here is another mature stag that has potential, but it's a little difficult to tell if his right antler has recently broken off, or has the antler's pedicle sustained some damage, in which case he may never produce an antler. Here is that same stag a day later, captured on another trail cam. We first recorded this stag on the 26th of March, and sometime between then and the 11th of April, he had broken off part of his inner tine. Seeker stags enjoy a good old roll around in a wallow, which are visited by numerous different stags. I wonder what he can smell. The peak period for our seeker rut is between the 10th and the 20th of April. If a mature seeker hind is missed during the first mating cycle, then around 18 days later they cycle for a second time along with some younger hinds.
That cycle occurs on the first or sometimes second week in May. This cycle can again be very productive for the hunter, due to more rutting and vocal activity from the stags. Over the many years that we have hunted seeker, we have found the second cycle early May can be as productive as the main rut period in the middle of April. Here is another 8 pointer that shows trophy potential and it would be nice to see what he looks like in a few years providing he survives that long. This 8 pointer with a broken inner top time appears to be the dominant stag in the area as shown on our trail camps. Listen to the noise he makes when he walks underneath the camera. And here they both are, 17 minutes later, when the stag tries to do his thing, but fails. From mid-May on, the rut falls quiet, but some rutting activity can still occur into June-July. Shortly after that, the stags move back to where they will spend the next 9 months or so, before doing it all over again the following year. We were hunting along this windfall damaged ridge and noticed this small stag. Then between him and us, this hind walks into view. The stag never saw us, and he takes off after her. After crossing the stream and gaining some altitude, we came onto these fresh rut pads. Then up ahead and close by, Stag let out a territorial hee haw call. Fast, didn't he? I don't know, that little tree will be right. We um, heard this guy do a well, about seven hee haws. Hee haw call, we knew he was down off this ridge somewhere. And the wind's not the best for us, so we had to cut right around and come in along the edge of a creek trying to keep underneath them which we did and as we're coming down I heard a um, I thought I heard a mew but I wasn't sure because so many wood pigeons and stuff around at the moment and they make little noises and crashes and stuff and then me and Alan at the same time both heard it mew and then we definitely knew right we're pretty close to a stag and we just kept on sneaking through because the wind wasn't the best and we thought he might have been holding a hind the way he was mewing One he horn. We thought it might have been holding a hind the way he was mewing. And um, we're just sneaking through the bush. Next minute he just popped up on a bit of a rise. Just a little spur in the in the pepperwoods here. 
and he was looking down at us and I thought to myself what a ripper <laughs> and he's had a little bit of ground shrinkage <laughs> so um, yeah he's a nice stag nice uh, he's an older stag his coronets are quite low on his head and he's a um, he's got a real neat head skin actually quite a blonde under there he's quite blonde so um, a bit of a character trophy eight pointer another one bites the dust you'll be ready Sometimes the most memorable days can happen when you keep your finger off the trigger. We stalked up onto this open terrace, sat down and gave one single seeker call. Five minutes later, we were rewarded with this close encounter. Apart from a deer's keen sense of smell, it is movement that alerts many animals to a hunter's presence. We are sitting still on top of an old log in full view of this young stag. We pulled down our camouflage face veils so as not to draw attention to our white faces. At his closest point, he comes to within nine paces of where we are sitting. Where he is now, smelling the ground, that is where we had just walked not ten minutes earlier. Sometimes you strike a day when the stags are just going off. Then when you think it is all going well, the breeze changes direction and stuffs everything up.
Well, <laughs> we've had a real unlucky day. We've been so close to so many stags today and the wind just always seems to be following us around. One of those real frustrating days and we're pretty much at the end of the day. It's half past 12. It will end of our hunting time anyway, till this afternoon. <laughs> we come down this ridge and I recognise the spot and I said to Alan, hey I've cut, I've cut a little lookout here, it looks across to a bit of a, a clearing and um, we'd spooked all the deer and wrecked everything and Alan goes, should we just sit here for a while? I'm like, yeah, so he's sitting here <laughs> and um, oh, hey, lady luck's got to be on your side once in a while and I'm sitting here and I saw the stag <laughs> come walking up out of the creek and we know there's a couple of wallows in this creek and the stag come walking up out of the creek and Alan's sitting down in front of me and he's, <laughs> he's not concentrating <laughs> and the stag's walking along and I'm going psst, psst, psst then finally I see, looks up and sees it and um, once I saw he'd stopped moving, got the camera ready, I mute, stopped him he kind of looked up this way then he walked again but because I'm sitting behind Alan with this gun it makes a hell of a lot of noise it's got a terrible muzzle blast I didn't want to fire even though he's sitting well below me it's safe it's just the muzzle blast would have deafened him and I saw <laughs> saw Alan going like this and I thought oh well he must be ready for me to shoot so I um, lined him up and let rip and for a little 16 inch barrel 30-30 bloody cowboy gun I'll tell you what touch wood I haven't missed with it yet and uh, <clears throat> hey that's a long shot for this it's probably 80 yards across there this thing's really good for <laughs> well I've sighted it in for 50 so yeah you beauty job done he's a nice looking stag I watched him for long enough and um, I thought hey he's got to be in the 160s at least so we're here to get a nice stag there's a nice stag one shot job done let's go have a look There's no hole in him, I think he died of fright. <laughs> yep. <coughs> oh, here he is. The end result of a uh, what started off to be a very frustrating day has resulted in a um, nice looking little stag actually. He's in good nick, big animal, and uh, good condition. So yeah, it tastes nice and saucies. Bit of hardware for the wall, we'll hang up. And um, yeah, a few more stories to tell. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Whilst I continued to cut up the beast, Alan went upstream to pick up the trail camera he'd set up on a wallow. And sure enough, the stag had visited that camera on numerous occasions. During the rut, stags are not vocal every day. Some days produce more activity than other days, but you will still walk onto deer. On days with less stag single calling activity, we call more frequently using both the single and he haw calls. We do not do the same call routine all the time, but mix it up, as that is what seeker stags do in the wild. A calling routine we use to great effect is, give a couple of stag mews at lower volume, each about five seconds apart. Then wait another 5 seconds and up the volume and built out a very loud single call. All of these calls plus many other deer and game bird species are available on the AJ Universal Game Caller. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.